In this video, we're talking about how to evaluate a trigonometric limit. And in this particular problem, we've been asked to evaluate the limit as theta approaches 0 of theta squared divided by sine theta. And when you have trigonometric limits, meaning you have a function that involves a trigonometric function, like in this case we have sine of theta, and you're trying to take the limit of that function, our goal is always going to be to reduce the function so that it's in one of these three forms, either sine theta divided by theta, cosine of theta, or sine of theta. Because when we take the limit as theta approaches 0 of any of those values, we already know the limit. So the limit as theta approaches 0 of sine theta over theta, for example, is equal to 1. So if we can change around the format of this function such that it matches in whole or in part one of these three values here, then it'll be easier for us to evaluate the limit. So for example, in this problem, what we see is that we have this sine theta value in the denominator. Well, we have two trigonometric limit formulas that involve sine of theta, but this one is just the limit as theta approaches 0 of sine of theta is equal to 0. Well, if we just evaluate the limit as theta approaches 0, in the numerator here we're going to get 0 squared, so we would end up with 0, and in the denominator we would get sine of 0, so sine of 0. Well, sine of 0 is 0, so this would just become 0 over 0, and that's an indeterminate form. We can't evaluate this because we can't divide by 0. So trying to evaluate at 0 doesn't help us, and even if we know that the limit as theta approaches 0 of sine of theta is equal to 0, and so we took the limit of the numerator and denominator separately, having 0 here in the denominator wouldn't help us. But if we could somehow manipulate this function so that it matched this first form here that also includes a sine of theta, maybe we could simplify it that way. So notice that this function is sine of theta divided by theta. So we would want to take this sine theta here in the denominator and divide it by theta. But if we're going to do something to the denominator, we also have to do it to the numerator. So if we divide the denominator by theta, which is the same as multiplying it by 1 over theta, we would also have to multiply the numerator by 1 over theta. So if we do that, here's what we get. We're going to get the limit as theta approaches 0. And keep in mind here that because we're multiplying by 1 over theta divided by 1 over theta, this is like multiplying by 1 because when the numerator and the denominator are the same, the whole fraction is equal to 1 in the same way that if we had, for example, 7 divided by 7, that fraction would reduce to 1 because the numerator and the denominator are the same. So when we have the numerator and the denominator the same here, it's like multiplying by 1, which we can do because multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value of the function at all. So we haven't changed the value because we're dividing the numerator and denominator both by theta. So when we do that, we're going to multiply across our numerators. We're going to get theta squared multiplied by 1 divided by theta. Well, that's going to give us theta squared over theta. And then in the denominator, we have sine of theta times 1 divided by theta. So that's going to be sine of theta divided by theta. Now in our numerator here we have theta squared divided by theta. That's just going to reduce to theta. Now whenever you're taking the limit of a fraction, you can take the limit of the numerator and the denominator separately. So we're taking the limit as theta goes to 0. We can take the limit as theta goes to 0 of the numerator, so theta, and then divide that by the limit as theta goes to 0 of the denominator sine of theta divided by theta. So you're basically just distributing the limit across the numerator and denominator. Now notice what we have. In our denominator here we have the limit as theta goes to 0 of sine of theta divided by theta, which is exactly this form that we have here. We know that that's equal to 1. So what we can say then is we have the limit as theta approaches 0 of theta all divided by 1 because this entire limit in the denominator becomes 1. Now, of course, in the numerator, we have the limit as theta goes to 0 of theta. Well, we can just evaluate at theta equals 0, plug 0 in for theta, and we end up with 0 in our numerator. So what we get here is 0 in the numerator with 1 still in the denominator. And now, instead of the indeterminate form that we got originally, when we evaluated at theta equals 0, now we have 0 divided by 1, which we can easily evaluate because we don't have a 0 in the denominator. This isn't undefined. 0 divided by 1 is just 0. So the value of the original limit then is 0.